Hello, I'm Brenda Duty from the Wildlife Education Program at the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. I'd like to welcome you to our place-based learning and state, Alaska State Refuge workshop uh, webinar series. In this series, we're going to learn um, all about our state refuges, refuges and all of the, the activities and uh, materials that are available to teachers, to educators of all types to be able to um, do place-based learning in those places. This webinar is all about the course itself and to generally define some terms that are cornerstones to this, um, this course. Um, this course was set up for continuing education credits for teachers. It's a 580 level graduate level course. Um, the entire course is the seven webinars as well as one field day um, actually in situ so you can learn of how to physically actuate the activities that we're suggesting for each one of the topics. So um, the field day experience for this course will happen either at Palmer, uh, uh, Potter Marsh Discovery Day, which is June 1st, 2019, or Palmer Hay Flats Fun on the Flats Day, which is June the 8th. Um, instructors can choose to go to either one or both of those events, and we will have instructions specifically for those teachers during that time. Um, because it is a graduate level course, 15 hours of contact time and a final project are required to complete the course. So our goal is to define design field trips for students of all ages that are um, engaging and really enhance their learning experience using the state uh, refuge system and really think of it as their learning place. We aim to uh, really get those students outside to learn anything. You can take reading outside, you can take math outside, just getting those students out of the school building whenever possible is a great opportunity. Um, we want our students also to understand and appreciate the back, their backyard, what's happening right around the corner. I don't know how many teachers I've talked to, and even myself, growing up in a place where we didn't even know some of the resources that were available to us. We definitely want students to be able to ask questions and uh, really engage in that inquiry process and develop tests to find the answers to those questions. That's all about the scientific process, but more than anything else, we hope that they keep wondering and keep observing and keep asking those questions and have the courage and confidence to follow through in finding those answers. Now some of the nuts and bolts of this course is that there is also a materials fee outside of the university registration. And you can find that, um, that Eventbrite site at the link you see here. Um, we talked about the recertification credit. And the registration was open until May the 2nd. As, because the webinars are recorded, you can really listen to them or see them at your leisure. You can do all seven in a row or one at a time. Um, and some teachers have chosen to actually attend the webinar so that they can meet the presenters and get to know them a little bit better. All of the registered, per registered participants will receive place-based lessons and support materials via email. Hard copy books will be distributed at the close of the webinar portion of the course. And you're welcome to call me with questions at the uh, number listed here, as well as email. Email is a great way um, to get a hold of me because I can really catch that anywhere. And all final projects will be emailed to the address above as well. So why did we choose to do a webinar series? Most of our workshops with teachers are all in person and they're a um, very concentrated amount of time um, and it's usually at the end of a long work week. So we learned from teachers that they really wanted that time to network together. They usually have very little planning time or opportunity to work together. So we wanted to res reserve what is already good about our workshops. And we definitely wanted to make sure that we had enough background and content 
and resources. That is one of the aspects of our workshops that teachers really appreciate is feeling like they have the necessary skills and um, resources to be able to teach a topic that maybe they're not as comfortable with. But the webinar, of course, helps us to create some flexibility and, and use of that teacher's precious time and energy. So we're testing this out to see how it works for that flexibility and um, how the learning and evaluation, the evaluation should tell us, you know, what, how well this worked for us this time. So, but we definitely want to um, really get into that active learning on, on those field days that are coming up in June. So the course materials include all of the Alaska Wildlife Curriculum volumes. There are a total of five. Wildlife for the Future is the most recently updated. The others, while they may have a little more dated look, the content within them is still just as applicable as it was the day they were written. And they have really stood the test of time. Uh, also, the Alaska Ecology Cards are a vital par portion of the lessons that you'll find within each one of the volumes. They really um, have a lot of depth and breadth and versatility, and we'll be demonstrating those as well at the field day. Our, uh, the Alaska Department of Fishing Game website is a treasure trove of uh, materials, articles, research, opportunities. Um, I just really encourage you to shop that website, especially the, pe the species pages. It's a great spot to go send students to to do their own investigations, to learn how to do a search, how to answer their own question. We also have the Alaska Wild Wonders Kids magazines that are available to all teachers in Alaska for free. All you need to do is to register for that subscription and we'll send you a classroom set every year until you tell us to stop or we are no longer publishing them. You can find examples on our website as well of past issues. One of the aspects that is really very important for understanding um, why we are doing what we do is the Alaska Environmental Literacy Plan. The Alaska Department of Fish and Game has invested heavily in the drafting of this statewide literacy plan to help school districts see how they could create a framework for integrating place-based learning through all disciplines, through all grade levels, and really um, enable our students to be able to make good decisions and make good citizens in the future. After all, if you think about it, Alaska is all about its resources. And that's why many of us are here for a variety of reasons. So um, understanding the environmental literacy plan is really important. It's available online, and of course we um, can get you printed copies if that's necessary. The Citizen Science website is also a very good place to um, learn more about how your students could engage in citizen science and a long-term observation opportunities. Um, the Ptarmigan Wing Collection program is a great um, program that students have been engaged in for quite some time. So if uh, students are hunting or if a classroom is going out hunting, and that does happen in Alaska, they collect the wings collect the data on the ptarmigan wings and download it into this website for, and it's actually used by our biologists uh, for information regarding ptarmigan. There are several other projects that are going on in Alaska as well, including, including the Birds and Bogs program. Um, this is being uh, the, the model for classrooms to be able to use Birds and Bogs is happening right now with another course. And we're hoping to set up, like I said before, a framework that other schools could just engage in, could, could just drop into to do more of these observations in, um, in our wetlands. We have the Fur, Skull, and Alaska Bears Teacher's Guides that are available for free on our website as well. They are more in-focused and specialized uh, teacher's guides with activities, background information, and we also back those up with kits that you can check out 
to actually have the three-dimensional materials for students to explore. And we have recently, you know, gotten some feedback from teachers that they felt like their, their students had maybe the most in-depth learning experience they've had all year because they had the real thing in their hands. They had the real um, texture and uh, really addressing all learning styles by having those materials on hand. So they can be sent to your school. Um, there's different libraries that, that we work with, um, the Arliss Library in Anchorage, to uh, make sure that it's an easy checkout for teachers to get their hands on those materials. And of course, the Association for Fish and Wildlife Agencies Conservation Education website. That's where you'll find all sorts of materials for inquiry, for um, assessing a habitat, uh, just a plethora of opportunities to engage your students in inquiry-related uh, activities. So this is a quick review of some of the webinars that will be um, happening in this series. Of course, this is the introduction, and I'm Brenda Duty. Um, I also did the Mammals in Wetlands um, webinar. Catherine Inman talking to us about the wetland plants and adaptations that make them successful. Audrey Taylor from the University of Alaska Anchorage talk is going to talk to us about birds in our wetland refugees, and especially that Birds and Bogs program. Um, Samantha Russell from the Alaskans for Palmer Hay Flats did a, does a great job in helping us understand what those friends groups do for the refugees and uh, the things that, how they support the work that's going on in those places. Marion Snively from the Fishing Game Threatened, Endangered, and Diversity Program talks about the importance of habitat conditions and uh, a little bit about, well, a lot about uh, the lesser yellow legs and uh, bat, actually bats. And it's a really terrific um, presentation to help us understand the importance of the diversity in these habitats. And the last webinar will be with Joe Meehan. He is the refuge manager for the state and explains how the system came to be and the activities that citizens can enjoy and, and really understanding that these lands belong to all Alaskans. So as part of the course, there is a graded assignment and um, we want at least two paragraphs summarizing the key points of each webinar in the series. And this will be included in the final project. You'll also attend the Potter Marsh Discovery Day or the Palmer Hat Flats, Fun on the Flats Community Day. And um, they'll also be given time at that point to plan a final project, which is due June 15th, 2019. And um, it's important to note that if this webinar series is used again, these dates will change and those locations will also change. And we also in te include, um, encourage teachers who work from at the same school or teach at the same school to consider doing a joint project. It seems like we're always stronger together and we can leverage each other's experiences and develop a unit and activities that really are um, something that you'll use again in, in the future. So let's get on board with some of these definitions and what do, what do I mean by place-based learning or pedagogy of place? It's usually engaged in with a local community um, or a specific location and it uses a thematic approach. It's interdisciplinary, so it's a, a real um, immersion, if you will, um, in approaching how a student learns. There's no reason why you can't learn reading using science um, as well. So you really can essentially hit both of those, those, th those topics at the same time. It engages active learning through service learning or some other type of project. So we don't just go through the motions of looking at what it would be like in a book or what we could possibly design. We actually do the work. 
And citizen science is another great opportunity to give back to your local community, to, um, to give to into the body of knowledge for that particular location and um, help grow uh, continued understanding and attachment for that place. So place-based learning is really creates a personal connection to the resource. It hopes we hope to create lifelong learning and that engaged citizenry in the end. And I think if you talk to people who have lived here for a very long time, um, they feel that attachment and that they have a responsibility toward um, the place that they live in in managing it properly and having a say in how that all happens. And so we accomplish this in a couple of different ways. We go to where the learning is happening. Sometimes that's a schoolyard or a park or state lands. And we align that learning through standards and skill sets. There's no sense in, in doing a program or a project that doesn't achieve your classroom goals. It's a lot of energy, and we know that teachers are already expending so much. Creating partnerships really helps um, to garner the best of, you know, what is available in your community and those, those people who want to provide that service. So it could be uh, the Soil and Water Conservation District, Fish and Game, Fish and Wildlife, um, the university. There's, there's a nice list of possibilities. Um, and we want to encourage those partnerships whenever possible. And using that standard framework from the Alaska Environmental Literacy Plan helps you to engage faster because it's already laid out in a time-proven method that works. Using inquiry during instruction is a big deal, and it takes a little more energy for a teacher um, to maybe reorient how they are engaging their students um, as far as using inquiry. How do we create a question that we can formulate a experiment for to or a study so we can actually answer that question? Anyone who's received a master's degree or a PhD has probably been hammered by some advisor who said, define the question, define the question, define the question. And that, that applies here as well. What do we really want to discover here? And even with smaller um, children, we can begin that process by framing our observations, which are really the, is the cornerstone to inquiry is having keen observations. And we can do that through just a, a simple mantra of, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. Instead of asking them, well, what do you see? We simply need to make the statement that I notice that there are insects on this log. I wonder what insects may have been here. It reminds me of Swiss cheese or something like that as just an example. But as we continue to coach students to use that mantra, we actually help them to slow down a little bit to, to recognize what they are observing. We certainly need to address those learning styles through that active learning. Um, as teachers across the state know, not all students, not all teachers learn in the same way. And sometimes, you know, when you get students outside, um, you will see a, the dynamic of your classroom change a little bit. Um, who may have, the students that may have may, been over-energized in the classroom might really be leaders um, when you're out of doors. And it's, it's possible um, for you to see some real blooming from your students here as well and certainly have some fun. There's no reason to cut out fun um, while you're outside as long as it's safe. And certainly access to research, researchers, and current events. I encourage teachers to circle back whenever possible to what is happening in their own backyard right now. It makes it very real and makes it 
come closer to home to those students. What you're really doing here is creating relevancy. This is our home. This is how our backyard works. This is the changes we're observing. These are the decisions we can make based on those, on the information that we've collected. So some tips for field trips before you, you know, you get out there with your students. Um, if you've been a little leery about taking students out, um, I encourage you to contact us and talk to us a little bit about um, what you can do um, and some help that you might be able to get for getting those students outside more. Certainly know before you go the weather, terrain, special needs, bathrooms, um, what what amenities are available to you, what challenges may you need to overcome before you get there. Certainly skill levels and age appropriate activities. And then there's always this question about clipboards. Um, while the research tells us that students say they feel more like scientists when, while they have their, their clipboards in their hands, for younger students especially, I encourage you to keep them hands free. Let's get them really excited and um, able to manage the landscape without falling and hurting themselves by having their hands available to them for good balance. There are other ways that you can document what you have learned while you're out there, but littles need to have hands free. And what about those flip phones or iPhones or other technology? Well, according you, of course, as teachers know where your students are in their learning. There are times when photo documents, documentaries make a lot of sense, and there are times when um, we just need to shut it all off and listen closely or, or look closely. What about taking, a food, taking food, a snack, out to wherever you're going? Well, it's really important for you to know who else may be in the vicinity and make sure that you have really great manners for, for cleanup. I mean, complete cleanup of the area where you may be ingesting some food. Uh, materials for inquir inquiry studies. Uh, there will soon be a backpack program at Potter Marsh where teachers can check out a backpack that has have materials, binoculars, um, other resource materials so you can identify birds and things like that um, in a backpack that you can check out through the Arliss Library and during the summertime the campground host will have it and can check it out right there at their trailer. Certainly wildlife safety is a huge issue in Alaska and we encourage you to get wildlife safety training for you and for your students. Um, all of the materials that we use for training students is available for free on our website. So if you've got questions about that, you can certainly contact me directly. And of course, dealing with fear, your fear maybe, and your students' hesitations for being outside. Have a loose plan while you're out there. It's always important to have an objective. But in the end, let the heron have its day, as they say. When something serendipitously happens and has nothing to do with the topic that you are pursuing, it's important to let that opportunity present itself. It can be a real uh, moment for those students that they'll, they'll not forget. So at this point, um, I'm excited to start the webinar series and appreciate the opportunity to record it through the OWL network, and make it available for teachers to, to review over and over if they need to, and um, encourage you to forward your questions to me directly, and I'll do the best that I can to return that around um, in a timely manner. And I look forward to meeting each and every one of you and seeing you at Potter Marsh Discovery Days or the Palmer Hay Flats uh, Fun on the Flats Day. With that, don't forget to get outside yourself every day. It's good for all of us. Thank you.